had it not been given you from my Father the above. The devil has no power over you. Only what you give him. Only the lies and the deception and the lust of the flesh and the pride of life and the lust of the eyes, the mindset, the psyche is where he attacks us at. But he can't touch your spirit if you love God. He can't touch you, Jesse, if you love God. I'm just about done. So Jesus, He goes to the cross and He's laying there bloody by this time. But listen, they, they've plucked out His beard. <laughs> he's been up all night and all day. He's walked almost nine football fields. Through Gog, all the way to Golgotha's Hill, through those stony cobble road wells, just wells and, and waves, and he's walking through these, these caverns and these places, and he's carrying his cross, and he gets so weak on the way that he collapses. And the Bible says that Simon the Serene carries him and compels him to carry his cross. But when he gets up there, I don't know about you all, but I know because I've died and I've been dead and and He's allowed me to come back. He's kept me here. I don't know all the reasons why. But He was on that ground. And nobody has to put Him up on that cross. He starts reaching for that cross. He reaches for it and climbs up on it. And they turn Him around and they drive those nails. What pain that must have been. I'm not talking about these little blasphemous nails. They drove spikes through right here through his wrists and his hands. And they nailed him to the tree for somebody like us. He said, I'm going to step down through time. Barbara, I'm coming to get you. Hell, I'm not going to let you die in a car wreck. I'm going to protect you with my mighty angels. I'm coming to get you. Janice, I know that Satan's put you through hell, but I've conquered hell and the grave and I'm coming to get you. I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm not going to leave you in that state. He says, he says many things, and that one thing He says, I'm not going to allow you to cover your sin because I love you too much, and I'm not going to allow you to die in that state, and I'm going to send My Word, and My Word is going to deliver you out of that place. My God, somebody ought to give our God praise. Sometimes the greatest thing that can happen to us is to have things taken away. Because it makes you realize what's really important. And one of the things tonight that I really want to encourage you about is this world that we live in, we get so blinded by the devil. We get so deceived by the, the, the world and its allurement to the flesh. God said to tell you tonight that this world is temporary. This world is temporary. This world is temporary. I listen, I went home that night on 11-2 on a Monday night. And I sat down in my chair like I always do. I sat down in my chair and I tilted my head over to the right and I was gone. And in this preacher that, that's never preached about death, now I've died. I understand death better than any of you because I've died. And when you die, it's just like the book of Ecclesiastes says, when you die, you don't know anything. My wife was there and God was there. I'm going to tell you right now, had my wife not been there, God was in my wife. Had my wife not been there, it wouldn't have mattered no how. I've been running the streets of glory right now. I've been running the fields of ambrosia. Alive with them, all the saints of old. But God said, no, it's not your time yet. So we've got a work to do. And our work is simply what's been said tonight. We are to tell people that Jesus is the King of kings and the Lord of all lords. And, and we're to tell them one on one. Two on two, fifty on fifty, a hundred on a hundred. We're to tell them that He's soon to come. He's the King of kings. And that He'll restore their life. He'll restore our strength. Listen, He'll get in the middle of our mess. And He'll restore us. And He'll set us free. Every, not just every now and then, every single time. I know that you're in pain. I know what it's like to be in pain. Shut your hands this way, everybody. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I'm asking you for a restoration right now, God, a healing, God, a supernatural touch right now upon the earth, God, right now. Jesus, have mercy upon her. Let her know how much you love her. Let her know, God, that you died for her sins. The next day, when I woke up and 
in UT Hospital. And this is something I hadn't really talked about. I just woke up. I believe I was in CCU. She knows ICU. Some kind of CC something U. When I woke up. Now this is, this is the truth. When I woke up, there's no telling how many times they had taken them big pads and shot me on my chest. My wife always says I exaggerate things, so I under-exaggerate things. Let's say they did it four times. Let's say they did it one time, two times. One time's enough. I got kicked by a mule. But the next day, I just woke up. And I, I really, and I, I didn't remember, and here's what was un, unbelievable about it, but, well, for you all, but maybe not for me because I went through it, but when I woke up, I thought I was dreaming. And the first thing I looked, I looked around. I kind of, I could see my hands. I started to look around, and I looked down at my hands, and I saw all these needles in, in each hand. And it's a true story. And, and I looked, and I see my boss, and he's one of my best friends at my workplace, and I see my, my wife and my brothers and my family and, 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 the, and the doctors. But in the very back was this guy, and I remember that, I know this had to be God because I just woke up, um, and I heard the guy say, it's like the, it's like the devil. I mean, it literally was like the devil. And I, when I woke up, and I heard the guy say, well, we're going to have to check him for blockages. And before he could even get the word blockages, I started yelling, you ain't going to find no blockages. Because that wasn't me that spoke. That was God that spoke through him. He said in that hour, he said, you, you'll speak. He said, why are you telling me that, preacher? Because all those times that they shot me, and this is a miracle. And I guarantee you they probably shot me. I know they shot me probably five, six, seven, maybe, who knows, maybe more than that. At least four or five times. Try to revive me. And the reason I know this because the guy that drove the ambulance lives right down below me is one of my best friends. And he had a, an issue going on in, in my driveway. I'm sitting there dying and two, two ambulance services are in my driveway arguing about who's going to take me to the hospital because of the money. I'm sitting there dying. So he, he gets out of his squad car, my wife remembers, and says he put two paramedics in the back of, of the ambulance and he told them if they didn't shut their mouths, he's going to arrest them on the spot. And he would. He's about to arrest them right there on the spot. So God had all that orchestrated. But I don't know, remember none of it. And the only reason I know this happened is, because, and people say, well, how does he know he died? I've heard this. I've heard, listen, don't think that I don't hear stuff people say. Somebody said, well, I don't see how he knows he died four times. I'll tell you how I know. Because he told me he was the one driving the ambulance. That's how I know. That's exactly how I know. I died at my house. I died three times the ambulance. Now, but when, I, when I woke up and I give God all the praise, there wasn't a mark on my body. Not one. Not even a trace of it. I had no pain. They said that I died of a heart attack, but when they, they checked me, it's like it never happened. And I've been to asking God. I've been praying for 11 years. Y'all been with me a long time. You've seen some of the stuff. 11 long years. I said, God, I want you to heal me. I want you to heal me supernaturally. Well, he healed me another way, but he still healed me. And I believe he orchestrated every bit of it except one thing. He didn't kill me. The devil killed me. God's a restorer. He's still that same God. Look at me. He's still that same God, young people, that walks with us and talks with us and tells us how much he loves us. When your mate's gone, when your mom and dad's gone, listen to me. When your friends forsake you, when you're in the darkest place, when everything you've ever known is taken from you. I know. He's still there. Even when you don't want him to be around, he's still right there. John and Mennonites. You know how we look at different, you know, we put all these denominational names and we think, you know, they're kind of odd people. The Mennonites were godly people, boy. And he told me, he said, I'm going to come to you in a way that you're not, you know, you're not used to. I didn't know what he meant. You know, I was thinking, what are you going to do? You're going to come in here with some kind of, you know, bellhop or I didn't know, you know, that's just me. He sent them Mennonites that night to my door. Man, how I need it. And they sung, It is well. How's it go, Jane? Yeah, they sung, It is well. <laughs> With my soul. God's a restorer. He stepped down through time for us. He climbed up on that cross. I don't care what, oh, I don't care what church you go to. I don't care what denomination you call yourself. You're not born again. You ain't going. Amen. He climbed up on that cross. Somebody said, Well, you know. There's other ways. Let me tell you right now. He was obliterated for us because we were so sinful. He had to be. And He's restored you tonight. Hallelujah. Will you stand to your feet and give our God praise? <clears throat> Thanks for joining with us for the broadcast from New Beginning Worship Center in Greenback, Tennessee. 
We are located at 6501 Highway 411 South in Greenback, Tennessee, zip code 37742. Emails may be addressed to nbwcmailbox at gmail.com. Pastor Marcus Severance and the congregation invite you to join with us Sundays at 10 a.m. for teaching, followed by worship services at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. We also meet midweek at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. We're located on Highway 411 in Greenback, Tennessee, just three buildings down from the intersection of Highway 95. If you can't meet with us in person, please join us again next time for our broadcast.